Hello, my name is Simon and I'm an application engineer at Materialize. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a heart model for 3D printing in the Mimix Innovation Suite. In this video, we're going to cover the entire workflow for using the Mimix Innovation Suite to create a heart model for 3D printing. We'll start from the initial segmentation of the DICOM images and work our way through to exporting the STL file that is sent to the printer. The most efficient workflow will heavily depend on your images, what you want the final model to look like, how the model will be used and even what printer or printing technology will be used to create the model. The more of this information you have at the beginning, the more you'll be able to reduce unnecessary work. In this tutorial, we're going to use a pretty general workflow to create a single color heart model. We've already imported a contrast enhanced CT of an adult heart. One of the things that can help reduce the time it takes to segment these models is obtaining good images. It will work much faster if you have images with a high resolution in isotropic or nearly isotropic voxels and an even contrast in the region you want to segment. To start the segmentation, go to the Segment tab and click on the Thresholding tool. Keep the upper boundary at the top. For the minimum value, we want a value where we can capture the blood but that doesn't allow it to bleed out and connect structures that aren't actually connected. Scroll through your images to make sure they're accurate. You can see that there are some areas where this pulmonary vein and pulmonary artery are bleeding into one another. If we try to break this connection by increasing the minimum value, we'll lose too much of the other blood pool. Sometimes we may have to accept a few false connections and then manually touch them up during your segmentation. If we turn on the 3D preview, you can see that the threshold is applied to the entire dataset and that the spine and part of the sternum are also included. We don't want this, so we're going to use the region growing tool to remove these from our model. Click on the heart and place a seed point. This will grow out to all the connected voxels. Now the new mask only contains the heart. If you're not as lucky and your mask still contains some unwanted structures, Use the Split Mask tool to remove them. Now we have to manually break any unwanted connections in the mask. To do this, we're going to use the Multiple Slice Edit tool from the Segment menu. In version 21, you have the option to auto-interpolate. By checking this box, the software will automatically interpolate between the slices you mark, so you can skip a couple of slices at a time. We'll start in the area where there's a connection between the pulmonary artery and the pulmonary vein. We just take the brush and start marking the area between the two vessels. When you're done, scroll back through your images to make sure that the markings are correct. If you want to touch up any areas, you can. When you're ready, make sure that your operation is set to remove, because we want to remove the connection and then hit apply. You might have to repeat this process in other areas of the segmentation, like in this area where the artifact is bleeding into the pulmonary artery, but we're going to move on to save some time. Another thing you might want to do is remove these distal pulmonary veins. You can use the Edit Mask tool in the Segment tab and remove them in the 3D window.
You don't have to worry about getting every little bit because we can always do another region growing operation. Once you're happy with your segmentation, the next step is to calculate a 3D object. Make sure that you select optimal quality and the right mask. Check that the 3D model has no errors and everything looks good. If you see something that's wrong, you can always go back to your mask segmentation, edit it again and recalculate the 3D object. The next step is to export this out to Tremetic. This is a sort of post-processing software for STL files. We can also use it to smooth, clean, or hollow out our model. The first thing we typically do in Trematic for these hard models is a wrap operation. This tool is found in either your fix or your design menu. For the entity, choose the heart. This tool does a shrink wrap around your parts. It can close in any holes on the surface and smooth it out, and it can also remove any internal shells in your model. It makes your model a watertight and easily printable file. Keep the cap closing distance at zero. For the smallest detail, make sure you don't use a really high value unless you really need it, or it will take a quite long time to calculate. For this model, we're going to keep a value of 0.75 mm. This means that all the details smaller than 0.75 mm will be lost. Once it is done calculating, you'll notice that we have a new part in the object tree. This object is more smoothed out than the original one and looks a little nicer. Now if we want to create a hollow model of the heart, we can use the hollow tool in the design menu. Choose the wrap model as your entity. We're going to hollow it to the outside so that the outer surface will become the inner surface of our hollow model. We can also give it a uniform wall thickness. When choosing the thickness, keep in mind what sort of printing technology you'll be using for your model. If you're going to use a more flexible material, you're better to increase this value to something around 2 mm, otherwise it's more likely to tear or rip. If you're using a more rigid material, you might be able to get away with a wall thickness of just 1 mm. You can see that it sort of bubbled the model out. In some situations, you might prefer to use the actual myocardial thickness around the ventricles rather than a uniform wall thickness. There's another video that goes through that process. But when you're just interested in the intracardiac anatomy, the thickness you use doesn't really matter. Now we want to trim the vessels open. We can use the trim tool in the finish menu. This tool works by left clicking points to form an area that you want to remove. Be sure that you've checked the remove inner box. How you cut your model really depends on what you're planning to do with it. So communication with the end user is very important. If you're interested in the outflow tract, you might want to cut off the apices of the ventricles. If you get floating pieces like this left over, you can use the shell tool in the mark menu. Mark the main shell of your heart and then choose invert from the mark menu. Now you just can hit delete on your keyboard and the floating pieces are removed.
If you want to separate the ventricles and print this model in two different pieces, you can use the trim tool for this as well. This time, check the box Preserve Inner and Outer instead of Remove Inner. Now you can see that you have two separate parts. If you want to keep the leftover floating shells, you can mark them using the Mark Shell tool. Right click on them, go to Separate, move the part, then choose Existing. And then choose the other part to move that shell to. We do the opposite for the coronary arteries to move them back to the outer part. Like with the wall thickness, when cutting your part, you'll need to keep in mind what printing technology you'll be using and what sort of support material will be used, or where the support material will be laid. That's because you want to make sure that you can access all areas of the hollow model. Depending on your situation, you might need to make a few additional cuts so all support material can be cleaned out once it's printed. When you're done cutting your model, send it to the Fix Wizard under the Fix tab. Make sure full analysis is checked and then you can hit follow advice. This is going to analyze your part for any issues it might have, such as inverted normals or intersecting triangles. Any issues that can automatically be fixed if you just keep clicking follow advice. At the end, you might have multiple shells if you're supposed to, and you might also have some overlapping triangles. Don't worry about those, your part will still be printable. Once your part is fixed, export it as an STL file, which is ready to send to the printer. Hopefully this video provides a good basis for you to get started.